And my thoughts are with every real estate agent in Victoria, because I don't know whether you all know that, that are tuning in right now, that the rules are quite different in Melbourne than what they are in Sydney during these lockdowns. Hey, Jason. Hi to everyone that's coming on. Hey, George Tarby. The rules are very different. Do you realise, hey, Ash, do you realise that in Melbourne, you can't show a property? Do you realise in Melbourne, you can't list a property? Do you realise in Melbourne that they have been in lockdown for like over half a year? I think it's like 200 days. Hi to everyone that's coming on. Do you understand the magnitude of the situation, not only in the length, but in how deep a lockdown it has been in Melbourne? Do you realise that in Sydney, you can still have a round of golf? But my thoughts are with those Melbourne agents because people don't realise it. Hi, Farah. People don't realise it, that the lockdowns are totally different. Sydney lockdowns, you can go list and sell a property, right? And that's all we care about, turnover. And I'm just really worried about, I'm just really worried about, you know, the economic impact it's going to have to the real estate industry. So we've got to be a little bit blessed here in, in Sydney. But I want to let you know that I just came back from Rookwood Cemetery and um, it's within 10 k's of where I am and I got stopped. I wasn't allowed to go in. There was security at the front and I said to the security guy, I said, I want to let you know that um, yesterday was three years since my young brother died. And I said he was 42 years of age and I've just come to, to see him and to speak to him. He's buried further down there. And I said, I was going to come yesterday, but my mum was going to be here and she was going to get too emotional. So I decided to actually do it separately. And he said, I'm sorry, you can't go in. I said, how come? I said, I'm not breaking any laws. He says, we've closed the cemetery. You've closed the cemetery. I said, how come? And I said, that would make sense. I mean, it's outdoors, open area. There's no one there. Like, what's the big deal? He says, no, the cemetery's closed. Come back in two weeks' time. And I said, but my brother died, actually. It's the anniversary, you know. I'd... Anyway, I'm not the type to sit there and argue. So I just did a U-turn and, and left. As I drove back home, I couldn't help it. I saw the Bunnings Hardware on the corner of Parramatta Road and Frederick Street. Cars were actually lined up to get into the car park right onto Frederick Street. I mean, we're talking about, they were lining up as if they were going to an NRL Grand Final. And I just thought to myself, like, realistically, you can't get or spread COVID. I mean, it's quoted consistently by the medical experts. Even, even Gladys Berejiklian is quoted saying it today. You, you, it's close impossible to get the virus outside. And good morning to everyone that's come in. And to actually allow hundreds of people inside Bunnings Hardware versus allowing someone to go and visit and, and mourn one of their, their lost ones. And don't get me wrong, I'm moved on from the grieving and suffering that I went through in the early stages with my brother. Those of you who know, he was my best mate. But there's so many things that are a paradox, a contradictory, you, you know, um, and I don't know, maybe I'm shooting this video as a form of self-therapy because, you know, I was pretty pissed off thinking to myself, how illogical is it that someone can go buy 
a screwdriver at Bunnings Hardware inside with other hundreds of people versus a single person in this open air graveyard where you actually touch no one. But that's the uh, world that we live in. That's the world that we live in. I also want to let you know, my friends, that I'm actually getting a little bit also, I know this sounds contradictory, but, you know, like in Sydney, like realistically, when we compare ourselves to what's happening in Melbourne, 18 months, as Kim Shannon says, 18 months in Melbourne, 18 months of stop start with 200 days or so in lockdown. But also, do you understand it's not easy to sell a home with someone not actually seeing it on the inside, right? Like, yes, you can turn around and say, we're going to do a Zoom virtual inspection. I get it. Maybe one in 10, one in 20, one in 20, one in 20, my friends, will buy a home off Zoom. But at the moment, do you understand? There are people that have sold that need to buy. That's a hardship story. There are people that have to sell their house because they've got financial problems. That's a hardship story, right? There are people that need to move because of strong family reasons, which could essentially be called essential. But you can't do that in Melbourne. And I'm going to urge, I'm going to urge, I'm going to ask Susan to tag Daniel Andrews in this video because... The one thing I'll say to you is this. If a real estate agent takes a buyer to a property, lets the buyer go through the property, the owners aren't at home. The agent doesn't go into the home with them as well. No one's hurt there. And the chances of COVID being spread are so, so small. As experts say, close to impossible. So why wouldn't you just allow that? Why wouldn't you just allow that, Daniel Andrews? Why wouldn't you just allow the agents of Melbourne to be able to show a property under those And why won't you be able to allow real estate agents to walk into someone's house, look at it, the vendors can be outside, can be outside, right? So you don't have to have a conversation inside the dining room table, right? the the word right? hand sanitizers all that you know why wouldn't you allow them to do that that would actually take a lot of stress away from people that need to make a move right need to make a move so yeah and maybe this is a maybe this is a a message to my brothers and sisters from sydney we should not be whinging and complaining. And even though I come in here, I'm, you know, it's obviously fresh and it's raw at 11.15 from the cemetery, which, you know, uh, is uh, uh, a soft point in my heart, right? But I'm not, I don't sit there. I don't, I've got to tell you, I don't spend my time whinging and complaining, right? I've said it. In life, you've got whingers, you've got watchers, and you've got winners, right? And the winners, my friend, are participating in the solution. They're not participating in the problem. And what does the solution look like? You focus on what you've got and not what you don't have. You focus on your progress and not your difficulties. You focus on what you've won and not what you've lost. You focus on your gratitude and not on your complaints. That's what a winner does. That's what a winner does. But you know what I was thinking? Why doesn't Daniel Andrews and Gladys Berejiklian and their uh, assistants, associates, call them what you like, why don't they go off and do their work from Zoom? You explain to me why they can't do their work from Zoom. Explain to me what is it that Gladys or Daniel Andrews has to be done in person, right? Why does it have to be done in person? Zoom can replicate exactly the same thing. And I'll tell you why I think that that wouldn't be a bad thing for them to do. Because 
it would create an empathy that at the moment they might not be able to grasp completely, right? They might not be. I'm not saying it. I'm not saying, I'm, please don't take this as character assassination. I think that their lives are hard. But you know what they say? Until you taste chocolate, you can't actually describe what it's like. You've got to eat it. And I think if Gladys sat down in her room and just did everything by Zoom and did exactly what she just said on a press conference, you do not go out of your home at all unless you need to go get vaccinated. If she did the same thing, she would grasp a greater understanding and empathy of the suffering that people are being caused. And again, don't think for a moment, I'm saying to you, just open it up, forget about everything. No, no, no. Be logical. And as the journalist asked her a week ago, and I'll finish on this, why is Bunnings open? Why the hell is Bunnings open?